This is the Snake River Canyon in South Central Idaho near the town of Twin Falls. This is the, the view to the west. Uh, if we swing around to the south, we can see just above us here is the Perrine Bridge, this uh, iconic bridge that uh, links the freeway to the town of Twin Falls and is also somewhat famous for the fact that base jumpers routinely uh, jump off the bridge uh, and parachute down. Uh, the Snake River Canyon is uh, quite a spectacle and has its own unique geologic history of the Snake River cutting down, but also lava flows routinely diverting the Snake River. Uh, and the story sort of culminates with the Bonneville Flood, this massive flood a little over 17,000 years ago that made the canyon wider and deeper than it is today. But what I'd like to do is focus on uh, these rocks here in the Snake River Canyon. The Snake River Canyon has uh, some really unique rocks as it compared to other places. A lot of people think that it's just a series of lava flows stacked on top of each other. There's a much more rich, complete history than that. So from this point down to the bottom of the canyon, and we're about halfway up the canyon walls here, the canyon is dominated by this rock called rhyolite. This is a volcanic rock, and this formed about um, maybe about uh, six to eight million years ago when, Ye when Twin Falls was sitting right on top of the Yellowstone hotspot. So the same volcano that now underlies Yellowstone was right here in Twin Falls. And at that time it would have been, been behaving probably just like you would think, it, it occasionally having explosive eruptions of ash, which blanketed the landscape. But at other times what this volcano did was it oozed out lava that was relatively depleted in gases and that lava, which was very rich in silica, is kind of like toothpaste. It doesn't flow very far, it kind of piles up on itself. And that's what forms uh, this rhyolite type rock here. If I get a little closer with the camera, you can probably see some of the white and kind of uh, colorless crystals in there. Those are crystals of uh, quartz and feldspar. So those crystals would have formed uh, either bef right before maybe the, the magma erupted or maybe soon thereafter. So the rhyolite at the bottom of the canyon is the story of the Yellowstone volcano. You can see the same rock uh, if you go upstream of here to Shoshone Falls, which is the big waterfall in the region, um, bigger than Niagara Falls and quite a, quite a spectacle when it's flowing. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna work our way up the hillside and look at these other rocks here. So you can see that the, the rocks in the canyon uh, are different, right? It's not the same stuff. There's some different textures, different colors going on there. Uh, and so we're gonna go investigate those and see what they have to tell us about the history, uh, geologic history of the canyon and what the rocks can explain and share with us. So we're gonna hike up the hill here and I've already moved past the rhyolite uh, move, working my way up to the next layer, which is just above me here, up this steep hill. So here we go. So the layer above the rhyolite sort of represents the, the death and destruction of the Yellowstone volcano in this region. So as Idaho was dragged over that hot spot, over that source of magma, this area became volcanically inactive. And so over time, those rocks became weathered and eroded. And we can kind of see that here as we get to our next rock layer. You can see huge chunks, small chunks, big pieces of rock, uh, all shapes and sizes, all kind of glued together in kind of a haphazard fashion. There's no distinct layering, that sort of thing. And so what this layer possibly represents is you know erosion maybe landslides something's happening that's causing this these uh, rocks to um, be broken up into pieces and be transported and so we can work our way up through the breccia layer which is quite spectacular what's interesting about this layer of breccia is here beneath the prime bridge it's quite thick in a second i'll try to give you some view of how thick it is. You can kind of see maybe down there on the bottom and then we can kind of trace it up. So it looks like it's maybe 30 to 40 feet thick here, but other places in the canyon, the breccia layer is uh, much thinner. And in some places it's, places it's completely non-existent. You have the rhyolite and the younger rocks uh, just sitting right on top of each other. 
So we're gonna make a little move here. And now we're gonna look at our next layer in the story. And this layer is really conspicuous from the Prine Bridge and from the Visitor Center Overlook. It's one that kind of grabs the eye that a lot of people often comment on or have questions about. And that's this kind of beige layer here. This beige layer, as we look close at it, seems to be made out of fairly fine sediment, maybe fine sands and silts, a little bit of clay. Uh, there's a few larger pieces in here, but by and large, it's more fine grained sediment. It's not ash. And as we look at the top here, we can see it takes on a much more reddish hue um, where it's in contact with the overlying layer here, this dark layer that we'll get to in a second. So what we can see here is in places this stuff's really crumbly. You can just kind of peel it off in layers. But up here where it's more red, it's definitely harder. It's been sort of baked. And the reason it has this characteristic, this color, and these properties is because the overlying rock here, this dark rock, is a rock called basalt. This is the main rock you see exposed in the Snake River Plain of South Central Idaho. This is basalt that was once lava, but unlike the lava down at the Rhyolite, this lava was fluid, runny, kind of like what you see in Iceland or Hawaii, uh, and it was erupting from shield volcanoes and uh, other vents in the area, filling in the topography, um, non-explosive and where this lava has covered this silt layer here it's actually heated it up which has hardened it quite a bit and whatever little bit of iron was in here has been oxidized to give it this kind of reddish color so that explains uh, the color change there and you can actually kind of see that color as you work your way down it's definitely more red where it's in contact with the basalt the other interesting thing about this um, this silt layer here is you can see it's definitely softer we have these hard resistant volcanic rocks in the breccia, the softer layer, and then the basalt. So it forms sort of a, a recess here, kind of an embayment in the cliff face because it's so much softer um, and not nearly as strong. And so I guess the last couple things here about the basalt is if we kind of look up at, at it closely, we can see it has lots of little holes, bubbles, right along the base of it here. And that's because these are gas bubbles. These are these things called vesicles that form where the lava is maybe flowing, pouring over either wet soil or water itself, or just, you know, the ground that has air pockets and some moisture in it. That causes gas bubbles to form at the bottom of the lava flow. It often has this kind of rubbly uh, texture to it as well. Uh, if we move over here a little bit, where these big blocks have fallen, uh, we can see that the basalt is much more massive. As you get towards the top, you start seeing more of the vesicles or the gas bubbles, but much of it is this very dense and kind of massive uh, layer here. So again, uh, right here under the Prime Bridge, at least four layers. We have the rhyolite at the bottom, which you can kind of see down here is that light gray layer. Then we have the breccia, which is just below us here. These uh, glued pieces of rhyolite um, all just kind of stuck together. Then we had our creamy colored silt layer, which represents some sort of either a depression that filled in with, uh, well, depression that filled in with silt, either by windblown uh, energy or maybe, maybe it was a pond or some sort of little water body. And then we have the massive uh, basalt layers, which form the, the top layer and the rim of, of the Snake River Canyon here in South Central Idaho, along with the scenic Prime Bridge. So uh, yeah, enjoy the great geology here of Southern Idaho.